With your help, we just conducted the single largest scientific experiment in style history. A hundred questions, six million responses, and now we have ourselves the one secret that'll have you looking great in whatever you wear. Hello Internet, welcome to Style Theory, the only beauty channel that looks at the data of design. About a month ago, we put out a video testing TikTok's newest filter trend, which throws your face in front of a rainbow wheel in an attempt to quickly determine your color season. To quickly recap, color seasons are a shorthand way of talking about which color you look best in. I think we've all had that one shirt that makes our eyes pop, that one sweater that makes us really glow, that one color that we just tend to fill our closet with because we look good in it, without really being able to articulate why. Well, this is the why. Just like how certain colors look better when paired together in paintings, art, and design, certain colors of clothing are naturally going to look better on you when paired with your unique combination of features. As an example, a blonde person with pale skin is going to look overpowered in something that's loud and bright. On the other hand, someone who has stronger contrast in their features is going to look washed out in pastels and other light colors. Ultimately, it's all based on three key factors. The general warmth or coolness of your skin, the lightness or darkness of your features, and the overall vibrance of your tone. How you fall into each of those three categories determines what your final color season is, the range of colors that you're gonna look best in. And if all that sounds complicated, yeah, actually, it kinda is. That's why we did a whole video breaking it down into a series of simple tests that you can do for yourself at home. For instance, I have a warm skin tone with dark features and a bright vibrance, which means that I fall between seasons. I'm right here on the wheel, just between spring and autumn. And the awesome thing about that is that it confirms why I'm naturally drawn to brightly colored colored, highly saturated clothing like my signature red, yellow, and teal jackets. They're all right there, perfectly in the middle of my range. But I think more than anything else, what I appreciate about this color season stuff is that it turns style into science. For years, I've been confused about how to pick out what I look best in. It's all trial and error. Emphasis on the error. I try on literally everything at the store with very little filter to narrow down the options outside of just gut feeling, till I finally arrive on, like, the one or two new items that I'm able to add to the pile of t-shirts in my drawer. Honestly, I think that's why black is just so easy for so many people. Look at all the color wheels here. It fits pretty much everyone. But the color seasons take fashion and turn it to math. It gives you a formula that you can follow to determine which colors you should look best in. Emphasis on the should. You see, at the end of the day, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It's subjective. A bright red jacket may be the quote-unquote correct thing for me to wear to complement my unique combination of features, but maybe you hate it. Maybe you only like black, or only like darker colors, or it's not trendy right now or whatever, it could be any number of reasons. Even if you're following a formula meant to give you the quote-unquote right answer for what colors you look best in, it doesn't necessarily mean that other people are gonna see it the same way. So, can other people recognize that you're actually dressing yourself well? Or are there other factors at play here? What is the essence of looking good? That, my friends, was the question we set out to answer with your help. At the end of that previous episode, we had a hundred questions survey to test your color matching preferences. And oh boy, did you turn out for that one. Over 68,000 of you took that survey, resulting in nearly 7 million data points for us to draw from. That right there, that is something that researchers dream about. That is historic. To my knowledge, there has never been such a huge scientific style survey done this way before. So first things first, a huge clap and a half to all of you for your help in this project. We are literally making history. And hey, if you want to be a part of history by helping us with future surveys and experiments, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right now. That way you're notified of the next one that's coming out in a couple of weeks. But for now, back to the matter at hand, your data. As you can imagine, this was a monster of a spreadsheet to work through. If you've never made a Google form before, when you look at the results, it'll actually make some easy to read data charts for you. Unless, of course, you overload it, which we did. That's right, our style survey broke Google. That right there is the power of the theorists. Even when we brought all the numbers over to Excel, the struggle bus was real. But eventually, we were able to wrangle all the data and were able to draw some really fascinating conclusions. First, let's talk about our subjects. In the survey, we showed you 15 different people with a range of different skin tones to get a concrete understanding of how color seasons change or don't across a diverse spectrum of people. From there, we assigned each of them a color season based on the same test that we used in the previous episode. If you've never held jewelry up to the photograph of a complete stranger and then pasted their face onto a dress to try them in different colored shirts, I don't recommend it. I have never felt closer to being a serial killer in my life, and I have bashed in human skulls with a high heel, so that is saying something. Anyway, we did as best as we could consider 
considering that we were dealing with a library of stock photo faces. In the end, we wound up with a fairly even mix of seasons. We also had some cuspers in there, who, like me, straddled two seasons, giving you double the odds and guessing what their quote-unquote correct look might be. We then color shifted their outfits to a variety of different hues, tones, and brightnesses to test all the variables that make up a color season. Finally, with everything ready, we paired them up outfit versus outfit, season versus season, and it was your job to pick the one in each matchup that you thought made the person look their best. To make things as fair as possible, each pair was only labeled as option one and option two, meaning that you weren't aware of what season that you were voting for. You had to rely only on what option you thought suited the person best. So with all of that experimental design out of the way, what did the results tell us? Drum roll, please. Out of our 15 subjects, your preference for outfit matched their correct color season 27% of the time. That is very low. Out of the 1,024,050 votes that were cast, only about 250,000 of them chose outfits that were technically the best looking based on the appropriate season. You know what that number translates to? Chance. Four seasons means at random, you have a 25% chance of guessing correctly. That's exactly what we're seeing here in the data. It's even more clear when you talk about the subjects who straddled two seasons. Seasons. We identified six in our group of 15 that could be considered cuspers, thereby giving you double the odds of calling out one of the two that they could potentially be. Of the six, your preferences match the color season for three. 50-50. Exactly chance yet again. So what does that tell us? Well, the big thing is that when you ask someone with an untrained eye to guess what colors are correct for a person, they can't. What they can tell you is what looks good to them, which it appears in most cases is completely arbitrary and personal and doesn't match the time-tested color season strategy. But maybe breaking it down by age will give us better results. Maybe people who are older will have a keener eye for fashion. Or maybe younger kids will be more in tune with what looks good. Nope, definitely not. In fact, when broken down this way, everyone performed worse than chance. If people were just randomly guessing or making their choices off a simple coin flip, you'd expect them to be right 50% of the time when given an either or choice of two outfits, one the correct color choice and the other not. But nope, across every age demographic, people were consistently rating below 50%. 48 47, 46, 47, 47. It wasn't a lot, but all the variability being below chance got me awfully suspicious. It shows that this isn't entirely random. There is something else at play, something that's skewing these results. So I dug a bit deeper. Out of all the ethnicities in our survey, you went three for three when identifying the correct color season for Hispanic subjects, two autumns and a winter. On the other end, both of our Indian models were labeled as autumns by your votes, meaning that you thought they looked best in muted warm tones. In actuality, they were meant to be summer and spring respectively, which is actually a current trend right now over in India. Bright, vibrant, saturated colors. And while Indian was our most misidentified ethnicity, light-colored hair was probably our most mismatched feature, with your results showing no consistency in color season to partner with it. Honestly, that result surprised me given how hair color is a big focus of most professional color analysts. But still, I couldn't pinpoint what the X factor was here. What was everyone reacting to that was making them perform less than chance? Well, looking at the data, there were definitely certain individuals that were obviously difficult for you to come to a consensus on. Subjects 1, 9, 12, and 15 all had fairly even votes across the various seasons as people struggled to figure out which outfit looked the best on them. But then there were some others, ones that I like to call the big swings, the times that you as a collective internet hive mind had a big ol' agree around one of the seasons, regardless of whether that season was right or wrong. For instance, Subject 2, everyone knew that he was a winter. Same with Spring for Subject 10 and Autumn for subject 14, but there were also some strong moments of disagreement here as well. Subjects 4, 5, and 6 all had the internet largely agreeing on the incorrect answer. For instance, the vast majority thought subject 5 was a winter with a dark hunter green shirt, as opposed to what she really was, an autumn with an olive shirt. So again, looking at the data, clearly this isn't just indecision or random guessing for you across the board. Sometimes you really know what you like, regardless of whether it's technically right or wrong. So what is it? What is driving those decisions? Well, eventually, I found it. I found what you were responding to. And it's not the color season, but rather, it's one of the three key factors that go into that color season. Remember I said at the top of the episode that color season's a product of three things? The warmth or coolness of your skin tone, the high or low contrast of your features, and the vibrance or saturation of your pigment. And while you did tend to opt for cooler tones in general, the driving force behind your decisions appears to be the last factor. Brightness. Across the board, you were all more 
more likely to pick colors that were brighter and more vibrant as looking good on the individuals in our survey. For the 17 and under crowd, it was about a 50-50 split, bright versus muted, but from age 25 and up, you are all about the colors, with anywhere between 55 and 60% of the votes preferring brights over muted. That also explains the big swings in the data. In general, your votes were going to the pictures where the outfits were more saturated with pure colors. Muted and halftones just weren't working for you. But that then leads us to yet another question, why brights? Well, obviously the data can't explicitly tell us that, but I do have myself some guesses. First, bright, vibrant colors are very much on trend right now. Take a look at the spring 2023 color trends. See what I see? A lot of cooler tones and saturated colors. Our poll went up the first week of April, the start of spring, and your answers go right alongside with those trends, what you are being served up online, in ads, all around you. If we'd rolled out this poll in October during the height of autumn, there's a high likelihood that we'd probably get different results to follow those current trends. But obviously that's not everything. I'm sure most of the people who responded to that survey aren't reading highlights from Fashion Week or skimming the pages of Vogue. No, I think there's more going on here. I think it has to do with us being on the internet. We live in a world full of images, everything competing for our attention. In fact, that's what some people call it, the attention economy. Companies not competing for your limited dollars, but rather competing for your limited attention spans. And that's why clickbait exists. Bright red arrows pointing to large red circles. Big eyes on big faces with big emotions. Primary colors and thumbnails with the saturation cranked up to 11. And so, in an online survey full of 200 images with subtle differences between the colors of a shirt, you're opting for the one that's gonna stand out. The one that grabs you. The bright one. And some corners of the fashion world already know this. In 2020, the fashion world saw the rise of people purposely color clashing, aka pairing wrong colors together. Mixing your neons and your neutrals. Pairing neighboring colors on the color wheel together like pink pants and orange tops. All of these are usually big no-nos that would make a color analyst's head spin. But people did it anyway. Because they liked it. And to their eye, it looked good. It looked correct. And most importantly, it got you to stop and take notice. If you ever hang out on Fashion Talk, you have likely seen many maximalist influencers. People who are rocking a dozen different colors and patterns on any given post. And while the official fashion rules would say that they're making a big mistake, the number of followers, likes, and comments on their videos show anything but. They grab your attention, just like the brighter options on our little survey here. In short, what we, the average person, think is flattering to wear depends on so many outside variables that shift our personal perceptions and relationships to color. Ads, trends, changes in season, even sociological things. You see this when you start to break the data down into other groups as well. Female identifying participants preferred light, more traditionally feminine colors, whereas male identifying participants voted more often for darker, traditionally masculine colors. Gen Z had a lot more love for muted tones than their millennial counterparts. But in the end, it all comes back down to the purpose of fashion. What is it for you specifically? Is it to look good? To compliment your skin? To have your best features stand out? Because if so, then color seasons are actually a terrific way to go. Or is fashion for you more about clout? To break out from the crowd? To build a brand? To be heard amongst the masses? For many, that right there, that is the true essence of style. And if that's the case, then throw those season flags out the window and grab as much neon as you can. Also, on a completely unrelated note, MatPat authorized red and teal signature jackets are on sale right now. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp. And hey, if you love learning how to use science and math to help you look your best in your day-to-day -day life, you'll love our sponsor for today's episode, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an online tool whose goal is to help you learn in a way that's interactive and hands-on. Sounds like a brand that we can jive with, huh? If I didn't make it clear already, we went through a mountain of data for this episode. Don't get me wrong, I am especially grateful to each and every person who participated, but it also meant that I used a lot of math. A lot of math to get our answers. And with Brilliant, you can take their data analysis fundamentals course and become a master of your own data. And you don't have to stop there either. Brilliant offers computer science courses to help you learn to code. For all those times you need to, you know, create a program that'll help you do a significant amount of data crunching. I don't know, just random example that popped into my head. In all seriousness though, having a program like that for this episode would have been a gift. Speaking of gifts, Brilliant has given loyal theorists like you the best gift of all, free access for 30 days. That's right, you can test out all of Brilliant's lessons, every single one, for free for a full 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash style theory. And the gifts don't stop there either. The first 200 of you to click that link are also gonna get 20% off an annual subscription to Brilliant. That is 20% off a full year of unlimited learning. Learning. So, what are you waiting for? Go to brilliant.org slash style theory or click the link in the top line of the description right now to take advantage of that amazing offer. Your brain is gonna thank you. It's also gonna have a big thank you when you tune in next.
next week. I'll see you then.